What's up guys, Everything Alpha Pro here and today I'm going to be doing a video I've been wanting to do for a very long time and for it I needed a 2002 Porsche 911 with a big brake kit and I've got several iPhones that I'm going to be using for this video. So what are we doing? Well, I'm going to be seeing is it possible to stop a moving vehicle with iPhones using them as brake pads. So let's say you're up in the mountains, you know, hundreds of miles from civilization and your brakes go out. You don't know what to do. You pull over and you got some people in the car and you guys all have iPhones. You have all the tools necessary to perform the repairs and you basically swap the iPhones with the brake pad on the car. I want to see is it possible to stop a moving vehicle at 20, 40, 60 and so on miles per hour and at the end of the day to be able to use those phones after using them as brake pads. So what I've got here is a 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera. What this thing basically is, it's a very fun, light, you know, well-balanced vehicle and I actually run a project with a partner on the side. We work with these 911s on a daily basis so I've got several of them sitting around. This one I wanted to use it for this video. So we had to upgrade the brakes to a Porsche Turbo caliper because the standard one it doesn't really fit them very well we wanted to get the best possible fitment in there so in the front we replaced the brake pads with four iPhone 5s's on one side they're facing the display so we, we sandpapered them a little bit so it'll have a little bit more friction on the right side we have them facing the aluminium shell so we're gonna see uh, how each fares after when we remove them on the rear of the car, also disc brakes, we have four iPhone 4S's in there. And all of these phones are working, just so you know. Uh, and I hope they will be working at the end of this too. But in the rear, same concept, iPhone 4S's, two of them on the display, two of them on the rear shell. So uh, we're gonna be able to see how those fare at the very end. Yeah, Apple Maps has officially been here and they're witnessing what we're doing here. All right, so I just thought I'd let you guys know this is extremely dangerous. I'm putting myself at risk because this isn't the brightest idea, but I am out of city limits. So there's no one around here, really just an empty stretch of abandoned road. I uh, just want to let you guys know again, do not try this at home. We've replaced the stock brakes with iPhones. Who knows what could happen? Now, we're not completely crazy. We have an e-brake inside as a backup stopping method, but we're not going to be using them. We're just going to be using the rear and front disc brakes loaded with iPhones to stop this Porsche 911. We also got a fire extinguisher just in case things get out of hand and our iPhones catch fire, the lithium uh, maybe wears through, gets in there, who knows. But I'm really excited to see what could happen today. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Let's go ahead and see what happens when you stick a whole bunch of iPhones as your brake pads in your Porsche 911 and decide to drive it down the road at 20, 40, 60 and so on miles per hour. Safety first, always. All right. So at 20 miles per hour, there's a lot of grinding. When I actually put my foot to the pedal on the brake, it was really spongy. I could see there's a lot of grinding in there. Uh, iPhones seem to be okay. Let's go ahead and try 40 miles per hour and uh, see how effective this is at that. I'm a little bit scared, but I'm glad we got a lot of runway here because it's a little scary when you put your foot down on the brake and nothing's happening. It seems to be pretty effective so far. So let's go ahead and up it to 40 miles per hour and I'll uh, see what happens then. Dude, we got fire, we got fire. All right, we're good. All right, so that was a little bit scary. We got up to 40 miles per hour. I stopped, it was really, really spongy. And inside I could see the iPhone broke apart, but it did catch fire. And uh, luckily we came prepared, so we were able to put that out. But in there, if you can see there's like shrapnel and pieces of iPhone. So beyond 40 miles per hour, I'm a little bit scared for my life. We're gonna do it. We're gonna be prepared, but I'm, I'm pretty scared. Hopefully we don't die in a fiery crash. This is 60 miles per hour. Uh, I'll try and go as fast as I can before there, but I'm, I'm honestly really, really scared. This was not a good idea. Dude, this was the best idea we've had so far. <laughs> okay, here we go. Dude, there's this new cat video. Cat video? Yeah. Cool. Shit, man, is that the time for this? Let's go. Dude, it's the perfect. There's also some shoes on sale. But let's, let, oh yeah, let's do it. Oh my gosh.
let's go. We got a fire. I hit 60. Did you guys use the e-brake? I had to use the e-brake. Come on, 100 guys. No, they're, they're already all falling apart inside, man. <laughs> oh, shit. That was hard to stop. All right, so we've just stopped after hitting 60 miles per hour, uh, unfortunately. Uh, to me, it's apparent now that iPhones do not make very great brakes. Although in the slower speed tests, they were effective. Once you get faster and you start pumping them, it's like nothing. It's like there's jello there and you can't stop the car. So I had to use the e-brake at the last moment. I'm afraid to go any faster than that. Not to mention, uh, I don't want to be speeding, but uh, scary stuff, guys. So basically, let me help you by never attempting to do this. Do not put iPhones in your brake helpers. They will fall apart, melt, and catch fire. So we're going to go ahead and take these wheels off, pop those guys out of there, and see what happened if there's any survivors. finally stopped we got the wheels off of this guy and uh, exposed the calipers so we're ready to take them off and see what kind of damage we dealt to the iPhones but I can already tell that the iPhone 4s's are a lot more durable when it comes to being used as brake pads compared to the iPhone 5s model but anyways let's go ahead and jump in here and uh, see what happened okay so I'm gonna try and pop these guys out the pressure was so extensive that it bent the entire casing and broke it apart that was it's quite crazy to see I mean I'm sure if I plug this thing into iTunes it would still work but Oh, it works. So the vibrate motor still works. So this thing is secretly alive. We just can't see it. So let's check out the other one. This one is a goner. So yeah, it's completely gone apart, but wow. All right, so these ones are tricky. Oh my gosh. Oh, nice. So, uh, oh, that's hot. So the entire screen melted. Let's see if the other portion works. This thing is uh, completely out as far as I can tell. This one did not survive. Let's try out the other side. All right, so very similar. Oh, oh, this one almost works. The screen is freaking out in the background, but oh, it works. Oh my gosh. That is iPhone 4S quality right there. As you guys can see, there's the battery logo right there. The touch screen no longer does function, unfortunately, but it still works, my goodness. Look at what this thing can go through and still survive to live another day. The 4S truly was a tank. So um, one of them did survive, the other happened to not survive. Let's go ahead and go to the other side where the iPhone's faced with the rear casings. But anyways, this is the side we did uh, have to use a fire extinguisher on. It did catch fire. Anyways, let's go ahead and see what extent the damage is. Oh man, there's a piece of assembly. Not a good sign. It's magnetic too. So let's pop these guys out. Burnt to a crisp. Chances of this working? Very little to none. <laughs> yeah, so that's it guys. Let's see if this works. Nope, this thing is uh, completely done for. As you can see how it compressed right here. I think the lithium got punctured. That's why this thing did catch fire. Oh my gosh. So, ouch. Now this one doesn't work either. So completely, completely crushed, destroyed. So uh, if you wanna borrow your friend's phone and you can use it as a disc brake, it will not come back in the same condition that you got it in. This is what it'll look like. So of course, guys, we're just joking with you. Uh, never use this as a brake. It's just fun to see what would happen if we were theoretically to do this. So there's one more set of iPhones in the very rear. Let's see if there's any survivors here. All right, let's pop these guys off. So, oh my gosh, this thing completely crushed it. Uh, doesn't look to have survived. Nope, this side is uh, totaled as well. So guys, there you go. The end result of this video, basically, never use your iPhone as a brake pad. The phone in the top right was the only survivor. Screen is flickering. Uh, you can't use a display, but one phone did actually survive. Now, basically, always take care of your brakes, maintain them, replace the pads so you never find yourself needing to use an iPhone in the mountains uh, as a brake pad. But I had fun making this video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Be sure to subscribe for many more videos like these and check out some of the other ones on my channel. I'll have many more up to come. So enjoy your non-mangled, non-disc brake abused iPhone. Have a great day, guys. Peace.